good morning everybody um thanks for inviting me back uh, i was looking through my diary it was uh, at least a couple of years ago that um i was last with you physically at fratton park and um and a lot's happened in that time and i've um, been delighted to uh, to be asked back so rather than go through a lot of the um the previous stuff that we um, i discussed my life story and my various sailing adventures i thought i'd bring you up to speed on where we are with wet wheels here in portsmouth um, but also um i thought i'd elaborate a little bit on that so it's not just an opportunity to tell you how great we are and all the wonderful things we're doing um, but actually um uh, to, to explain some of the challenges that i've had to undergo particularly as a disabled uh, entrepreneur uh, adventurer um, someone starting up um, businesses and social enterprises. So without further ado, um, it's going to be based around um, Wet Wheels. You heard Anders mention that um, Wet Wheels is a charity. It is a charity. We have a national charity, um, but I want to be talking specifically today about um, our Portsmouth Wet Wheels operation, which is actually a community interest company. It's a CIC. Um, so what is Wet Wheels? Well, um, in a nutshell, you can see that it's a it's a boat, um, it's a motorboat. Um, it, they um, they're nine meters long. They're built on the Isle of Wight. They're powered by twin Suzuki engines. Um, you can see there they've got three hundreds on. They go very fast. And the idea is, I created it to enable disabled people who either did not want to go sailing or could not go sailing uh, to come on the water and have a shared experience where they can uh, learn about seamanship and drive the boat. Um, so that's great, we, we get that, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, uh, the, the, the backgrounds to the business itself. So as I mentioned, Wet Will Solent is a community interest company. We're limited by guarantee. Um, that's quite important that we're not limited by shares. And the reason for being by guarantee is, is to give comfort to, um, donors and supporters that we are genuinely a social enterprise and no one in the business is making um, a profit or taking dividends. Uh, we were founded in 2011, so this year is our 10th anniversary and we'll be celebrating that more, particularly during the boat show um, in Southampton um, and throughout the year. We're based at Gunwharf Keys under the Spinnaker Tower. It's got to be one of the best spots in Portsmouth to have a boat. Um, it really is quite extraordinarily beautiful there. Um, we have taken over the last 10 years, the Portsmouth boat has taken in excess of 11,000 people. 80% um, of those is the first time they've been on the water. Uh, we've got two part-time employees, um, an administrator and um, a retained skipper. Um, I have eight volunteer crew and directors. Um, we've got four directors and the rest are a volunteer crew. Um, we do get offered a lot of volunteering opportunities if people want to volunteer for us, but because we're so niche um, and we're so uh, uh, highly trained in what we do, we actually don't regrettably have much need for volunteers on the boat. So here's the, here's the meaty stuff. So our turnover, the Portsmouth boat, my turnover is normally about 100 grand a year. Um, and that's a lot of money um, to, to raise, to start raising each year. 30% of that comes through trading income. So we ask, because we're a social enterprise, we, you know, we ask people to contribute to their trips um, and those that can do. Um, the rest of it, 20% is through fundraising events, dinners, abseiling the tower, benefit in kind. And the rest of it is the hard graft. It's the grant making trusts. It's me sitting behind a computer, you know, seven, eight, nine hours a day writing applications. Um, and of those, nine out of ten are unsuccessful. So it's a, it's certainly um, a challenge raising the money. So one of my challenges, particularly, this is kind of getting into the, the weeds a bit, but um, I think it's important that people understand that as a disabled person myself, for those that aren't fully aware, um, I'm paralysed from the chest down. I broke my neck 30, 37 years ago, 36, 37 years ago. So I'm paralyzed from the chest down, what's known as quadriplegic. Um, and so we have, we have our, <laughs> the, the, the everyday challenges of being a disabled person, the, the care that's needed to help me get up in the morning, uh, get me washed and dressed. And on top of all of that, you've then got the, the physical um, access issues. You know, how do I get to work, transport? Um, 
you know, with, again, without going into detail, last week I settled a claim against Southwest Trains um, for nearly breaking my foot getting onto a train. Um, I've, had, I've donated the money to charity, but the principle is that it just shows the challenges you have as a disabled person um, accessing um, transport. The tube in London, you know, only 20% of the stations are accessible. Uh, buses, all of these issues around transport make life difficult as a disabled person. Um, these other things, networking, marketing services, all the things that, you know, we can do when we go to out to offices or lunch to meet people to talk through our, what our business is about and, and build our networks. Um, all of these things, access to goods and services, banking, legal, all of this is, is a challenge if you use a wheelchair um, or if you have you know, some other form of disability. So the reason for mentioning this is it's not, not for sympathy. Um, I, don't, I don't need that, I promise. Um, is to, to kind of illustrate the challenges that people with disabilities get before they even get out the door to start to, to run a business. On top of that, there's what I call the unconscious bias. There's, you know, um, some of it's unconscious, some of it is downright discrimination. Um, you know, regarding the train, for example, is a good example. That is discrimination. And, and all of that builds up to a challenge before you've even got out the front door. Me personally, um, I, I, in addition to running Wet Wheels Solon, I have a company called Personal Everest Limited. So I travel the country, or I used to travel the world before COVID, um, delivering professional speaking, inspirational speaking around the world to, um, to, to all sorts of groups. I'm a director of four other companies, a trustee of two other charities, that DL you may see after my name, you might wonder what on earth that is. Um, it, it doesn't mean does little, I promise you, or it's not a, a degree in envelopes. Um, it's actually, uh, I'm a Deputy Lieutenant of Hampshire. So I represent the Crown um, when requested to by our Lord Lieutenant. And that involves, for example, citizenship ceremonies. Um, I represent the Crown at citizenship ceremonies. I sit on the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service, so I help identify and nominate um, uh, local voluntary groups for the QABS awards. And on top of all of that, as if I don't have enough, um, I'm planning my sail around um, the world, which is taking a lot of time and effort. Um, so I'm just about done. So I thought rather than dwell on, on the stats and all of that stuff, I'd show you some nice pictures. Um, and, and this, you know, I sometimes sit there and moan and, and grumble at, about how difficult it is to do my job and the challenges I have to overcome to uh, to do um, the, the, my role but then occasionally I get out on the boat oh actually I want to show you that these are these the that, that 8,000 is the national um, number of disabled people we um, we take out because we've actually got six boats now not just the one we've got six um, 50 quid ahead is the is the rough amount of um uh, money it costs to take an individual on the boat and 85% of our income uh, goes di uh, to direct costs. So as I was saying, um, you know, I sit there and grumble sometimes about how, how tough it is trying to raise the money. And then I get out on the boat occasionally and I, you know, I, I witness this um, on my boat and it just kind of puts life into perspective and makes me realise that actually everything I do is all worthwhile. Um, that's Ben Ainsley launching um, my last boat. And as I said, we've got six boats. We've got one top left is in Falmouth, down in, um, uh, down in Cornwall. Top right, Whitby in Yorkshire. Uh, middle left, Dover in the southeast. Uh, middle right is, uh, is Hamble in Southampton. Bottom left is our boat. And the bottom right one is Wet Wheels Jersey in the Channel Islands. Um, if you can imagine, all of those boats cost a quarter of a million pounds. Um, all of those boats cost between 50 and 100 grand a year to run. Um, you'll understand the challenge. But then I was out on the boat the other day and, um, and that I witnessed that. And um, it just puts life into perspective. And after the last 12 months we've all had, um, it makes me realise, you know, that what Wet Wheels is doing is changing people's lives. And, um, and it makes the world, the world seemed OK. So there you go. That's my whistle stop tour. Um, I'm going to, if I stop sharing my screen now. Um, Just click the uh, share button at the bottom of the, uh, there we go. Thank you very much, Jeff. That is truly inspiring and it's really interesting to hear where you've come on 
from the last time we we spoke and last time we spoke with us. Um, I've got a couple of quick questions, and there's a uh, one question to come into the Q and A area. So I'll start off with that first of all. So, how are your plans for your sale around the world going? And that seems incredibly daunting. <laughs> to yeah. so th this has kind of been it's been on the table for five six years, um, and I've got very close a couple of times, really close. I mean to the point where we were about to sign deals and then it fell through. Um, and for whatever reason, I, I, and I, I can't really, I can't put my finger on what it is. It, it's frustrating and it's, it's emotionally draining because I invest, you know, if, I, if this does come off the ground, we're talking about a three, four million pound project, um, it's going to be life changing for me and my family for a year or two whilst we go through it. And it is, it's a huge upheaval um, and to get close and then to get knocked back. I've been in that situation two or three times now and I've kind of resolved myself to, I'm not going to get too excited now until we find a, um, a, a, a sponsor who's going to make it happen. I've got the design for the boat. I know the route. I've got the plan. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it trickles along and then every so often um, it, it gets a new lease of life, but I've learned not to let myself get too excited. That's incredible resilience. How, what, what sort of tips do you have about how to like, sort of overcome that, I suppose? You must have been put down so many times. Yeah. So how do you... No, I think... Okay, this, uh, this is... Uh, I'm not sure how this will... I think being disabled has helped me um, learn those skills. And there's, I've been, you know, I've been kicked so many times. Not literally kicked. Um, although Southwest trains weren't far away from it. Um, the... Um, you get knocked back so many times that you just learn to live with it. And I have, and in many ways, that's how I've got through the last 12 months. Um, I've, I kind of have learned to teach myself that things get better. At some point in time, of course, that's the, un, the, the indeterminable thing is how long will it be? But at, at, you know, at some point, things get better. So no matter how many times you're kicked, and we've all, everyone listening to this or watching this will have been touched at some point by, by tragedy, whether it's in your family life, your personal life, your friends or work or something, something has happened to some one of us. If not now, it will do. And we just learn to, to live with it. And I think, so that resilience is an interesting word. And it's one that I have learned to manage over the last 30 years, particularly with my disability. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but it makes it, it, I think what it does, it doesn't, it doesn't take away the frustration when things go wrong or, you know, it goes it, the last minute, but it, it, you still, you're still angry at it, but you learn to cope with it better. Mm -hmm. I suppose by never getting too high, never getting too low and just trying to stay yeah. good mindset. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, we've had a few more questions come in. So uh, one from Fiona Orman Treen, who said, incredible story, thank you for sharing. What is the biggest challenge facing a charity right now, please? And how can we as business owners help? Good question. Okay, so the biggest challenge, I mean, everyone's, whoever you ask is always going to say money. And, um, and you know, and I think it's a bit, you know, it's a bit obvious that money is the issue. I think it's being, for me personally, it's getting recognition that actually what we do is more, and I'm talking about wet wheels here, um, it's recognition that this is more than just a trip around the harbour. Um, we are working quite closely with organisations like Dementia Adventure um, and local nursing homes to understand the impact of repeated trips on people with disabilities, um, but, you know, older people living with dementia. We're working with um, some specialist disability schools like Trelaws and Rose Road to understand what, what this is doing for people's mental health um, like I say, it's not just getting on the water and, oh, you know, an hour later going back to the classroom. We want people to, uh, we want to, uh, and we're, we're getting anecdotal evidence of it, reducing anxiety, helping improve mental health and reducing, you know, the reliance on, um, on, on medication, helping people sleep better. I'd love, absolutely love some research around that. Um, mm. but all these things, it costs money. So, um, so my challenge is trying to, is to, is to try and, on one hand, I want to try and evidence, empirical evidence, the, the good we're doing. But on the other hand, you look at that last photograph I showed you and you kind of think, Is that, isn't that enough? Yeah, um, you know, that's the difference we make. If only we could bottle it, we'd all be quite wealthy. 
Uh, obviously actually changing people's lives, which is incredible to be honest. Um, Jeff, we've got, we've got a couple of uh, questions left. So first of all, from James Bishop, who said, great stuff, well done, Jeff, first of all. And other than money, what's been the sort of biggest challenge in getting wet wheels on the water? Um, it's over, uh, okay. So on paper, I, I knew that wet wheels, because I've sailed all my life. You know, I didn't talk about it today, but I was the first severely disabled person to sail around Great Britain on their own. I sailed the Atlantic on my, with, a, with virtually on my own with a bit of help. Um, I founded the sailability charity. I was the founding ch uh, chairman of that in the 90s. I spent my life sailing um, and, I, and there's 240 sailing charities in the UK, but I recognised there were disabled people who would not or could not go sailing. But I, I as a passionate you know, person who loves going on the water, I realised it was the water that is making the difference. I don't care if it's sailing or if it's power boating. I don't give a monkeys really, but there's a lot of snobbery around that. So identifying that there was this need for people who didn't want to or could not go sailing, it was evidencing that what I was proposing was safe. Um, and I've had to start, for, I don't know who asked this question, but um, it's a good one because I've had to start from ground zero um, and if I wasn't Jeff Holt with my track record, I'm not sure anyone else could have got this off the ground because I, and that isn't, I'm not being arrogant in that. It's just that I was prepared to stake my reputation and my integrity, which I had built up on this working. Um, now, if it had gone wrong, um, I would have been, you know, in a, in a pretty bad place. But using my name, using my sponsors, I was able to build, build this from nothing to six boats. And it's not easy. You tell someone you're going to take a profoundly disabled young person with a life limiting disability um, out on a powerboat and let them drive it at 30 knots with their mums and dads and friends. You know, it, it sounds bonkers on paper, um, but actually what doing it and creating that structure um, has been the most challenging. We've literally had to start from scratch um, in terms of the, the licensing, the legal, the the risk assessments, the standard operating procedures, um, it, it, you know, it, it's the, akin to a full blown business um, mm. uh, for a small organization. So good. It was, yeah, it was James Bishop who uh, actually works in insurance asking that question. So I'm oh, sure well, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be able to relate to that with you. <laughs> um, finally, Jeff, last question from Simon Moyle has come in saying, do you have any plans to purchase additional boats in other areas of the country? Yeah, so we, in fact, we are, just this morning before I did this, I was on the phone to Scotland. Um, we are hoping to place a boat in Edinburgh um, in the spring. We've got half the funding already, um, which is great. Uh, the Princess Royal, who's our patron, is hopefully hosting an event for us later in Scotland. So, look, um, I believe that the, the, the perfect number of wet wheels boats in the UK is 14, 14 or 15. Um, and we've got six, seven at the moment. Um, and the reason I think it's that number, and it's not one in every port, is that I just don't think, although we would we would be able to operate, I think if we want to continue operating at capacity without overlapping on each other, that's the right sort of number. Equally, you can't just parachute a brand new boat into a location. It's all about the people who will run that boat because they have to run it as a business um, and they have to raise, you know, 100 grand a year to do so. They will take a they will take a small salary out of that um so that is it's a real challenge so ultimately we're looking at over the next five years we've got a plan to have three or four boats um over the over the next five years and then who knows what we'll do in the next five years <laughs> it's it, can you imagine raising a quarter of a million for every boat plus another 50 grand to run it is um it's it's not easy no, it doesn't sound like it. Jeff, thank you very, very much. We'll be sharing um, a sort of roundup of your talk afterwards as well. If anyone would like to get in contact, we'll share your details. But Jeff, thank you so much. Truly inspiring. But thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I'll come back in another few years and <laughs> fill you in on the lectures. Three and a half years time. We'll book you in now. Thank you very much, Jeff.